Welcome to the Ignition Point podcast, the channel for aspiring entrepreneurs. We are so excited to have one of my favorite people on today, James Dixon, who's also known as Superman is for real. Look he at has the been necklace, Superman so is for real right here. Me. That's right. So Love it. <laughs> tell us about your story. I don't even need to introduce you. <laughs> well, you know, first of all, I'm honored to be with you. I love your energy. I love who you are. I love the way you connect people together. I came out to Utah the first time, and I'm just amazed by the mountains. But the most impressive thing is here's not the real estate. It's the real people. And uh, so I'm honored to be here. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me about my story, it's simple. Uh, I'm a person that did not realize that I would have lived with resentment had I not connected with people to help me pull out what I had on reserve. Mm -hmm. Inside of me, man, I carry a, the ability to be a spark plug to the will for people who lose limbs, lost in life, people lost in dreams. And uh, I was just holding on to that as my personal ambition. But now it's the thing that ignites me every morning to get up and work with people. So that's what I do. It's pretty amazing. Everyone reaches out to James because yeah. he inspires so many. He's on, <laughs> you. I, I like I follow you on social. How yeah. many, how many followers, how many subs on uh, YouTube? Yeah, 1.45 uh, yeah, million. Yeah. 1.45 million. And yeah. you've got to follow James. If you want a daily dose Come of- on, man. Of That's that kind of energy motivation. and truth, follow James. Amazing. So tell us where your journey started. Okay. Now, my journey started in a unique place. I wish I could say I won a championship. I did all those things. But I was the kid that sat on the sidelines of life watching everyone else move, walk, run, do things like that because I couldn't. I didn't take my first steps physically on my own until I was 11. And that was after my amputation when I lost my leg. The thing that people did at nine months, I never did. Mm -hmm. Never got to experience that. What ignited my whole life change was the changes after surgery, recovery, surgery, surgery. On my 34th surgery, they took my leg, and um, my right leg, and they did it without me knowing it was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. My mom and dad had come with me to the Shriner Sh Hospital in Chicago, and uh, they had never been together. So I should have known it was a big moment in life. But uh, I remember them giving me a tour of the place. My mom and dad are off in a meeting. They come back and my dad walks in and he tells me if, he ever, if I ever need him, uh, he'll come. I didn't know that was goodbye for him. My mom walks in and was just like, I need you to be good. And I just thought it was a normal hospital stay. They do things with me and I come back home. Because you've done, at this point, 33. 33 of those in a row. Right. Every six so. months from the day I was uh, three months of age, started with the surgeries. Hmm. And I've, that's all I've ever known. Hmm. I've never known it was like uh, um, you know, to, to walk, run, do any of those things. So, But this was a hopeful surgery because they told me that this would be a good one. They asked me the question, do you want to lose your leg? And I was like, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. Whatever I do, I don't want to lose my leg because that's all I ever knew. Sometimes we all can be like that. You're afraid of giving up something, not realizing that that scarcity mindset keeps you from a whole abundant life. I lived that way. Hmm. So when they took my leg, I woke up, I was angry because I felt like they violated me. No one, they asked me, did I want to lose it? And I said, no. And beside me, I had two kids in the room with me. And I watched one, his name was Matt. He was eight. He died right there in the room. And so I'm afraid that perhaps kids die here. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, I had a 12-year-old kid named Gilbert. And he was paralyzed from the neck down. And his mom came in and signed over her parental rights and told him, I'm sorry, I just can't do it anymore. And I watched that. So I'm afraid that either I die in here or, or they get, they're going to abandon me and no one's here. And I wake up and my leg is gone without me knowing it was going to be gone. So when you ask where my journey started, it was there. It mm. seemed like a very down moment. And I was ready to give up because my mom was so convinced you that I was a cripple. She forced me to call myself that because she had never seen me do anything other than lay there and recover. Mm. You see, a lot of us are trapped by what was in our resume, mm. by what we used to do used to have, but that's only your past. It can't tell you what you were born to do and what you're capable of. But the same word, resume is resume. Whatever it was inside of you that God gave you from the day you were born, and you can hit play on that and resume with that purpose, your original design. And for me, it was to show other people how you can overcome adversity. Mm. I just didn't see it at the time. So, so your mom saw you one way, but will you share what your grandma yeah. saw you? Man, <laughs> that so the Superman isn't uh, just a trinket. It's what she told me I could be. Hmm. You know, I'm sitting there and I'm broken because my mom said, son, you're crippled. You'll never be able to do the things that you're talking about doing. 
And my grandmother said, baby, this is just kryptonite. You're Superman, you understand? Mm. And so I don't wear it for the symbol of the cartoon. I wear it because it's a symbol of hope. Mm. It was the hope she gave me. And now I give it to others. Let's talk about that because uh, you showed me this video that really moved me. Uh, uh, someone who was on their deathbed. Maybe you can tell that story about what he, <laughs> his last wish. I well, really thought about that. And that's such a powerful yeah. image in my mind. Yeah, his name is Francis Bell. He's an army vet. He wanted his leg. And he was an amputee. And he called me coach. And I was there before he lost his leg. And when he lost it, we were hopeful that he'd be able to recover. We walk, get back to riding a motorcycle. But they had said because of uh, dialysis, his heart was too weak to continue. Hmm. And so the insurance decided not to provide him with the leg. And so they assigned him to go back home and uh, so he can pass away with his family. And so he says to me in the hospital, he said, Coach, there's one last thing I want. I want to die whole. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I want my leg. And so I asked the prosthetist, I asked the doctor, is there any way we can get him a leg? And they said, no, insurance won't approve it. His heart's too weak. He's not going to be a waste of money. And so I pulled every string I had. I called uh, prosthetic companies and I said, he's not doing well. They've not given him long to live. Is there anything that I can do where you would do me the favor of making a leg for him so that he can pass away whole? I said, I'll do whatever it takes. If I got to make payments, if I'll serve, I'll do whatever you do. I'll do advertising, whatever it is it takes. And they agreed. And so they make him a leg and with, um, within 12 hours. And I got to take and deliver that leg to him as he's at home on his deathbed. And there was one other thing he wanted. He wanted a Harley symbol on it. And so I went to a Harley store, drove an hour and a half, found one. I got a sticker that I could put on that leg. And I put it on him. And I said, I kept my promise to you. I shook, my, shook his hand, his family celebrated, and he said his last words, thank you. You see, I got to be a superhero for that man. Yeah. And I get to carry that on, right? And people said, well, he died. I said, sad stories. No, man, that man's wish was granted. Hmm. He mm -hmm. died whole, you know? Yeah. I could see it. What, what moved me about the video, too, is you present him with this leg, mm -hmm. and you can see he puts the leg on, yeah. and you could just, his physiology changed. That, yeah. he, that you could see at that moment he was whole yeah. and that he was ready. That was it. Yeah. You know? This is yeah. what we're doing. You're talking about taking entrepreneurs. You're connecting people with purpose. Mm -hmm. Sean, you changed my life in one conversation. Mm -hmm. You said to me, I see your purpose is high. And uh, you talked about profit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, sometimes I sacrifice one for the other, mm -hmm. not realizing that if you don't succeed, mm -hmm. you don't have the same audience, you don't have the impact. And, mm -hmm. and so I went back and I realized that sometimes your mother Teresa has to sit down and you have to pull in your Elon, mm. you know, and say, I've got to be inventive. I've got to be creative. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have to do something different. Yeah. It changed everything for mm. me. So thank you. Thank you. You know? Yeah, it's, it's inspiring to watch you. I mean, again, follow James, one of my favorite follows, because <laughs> to see you on your journey, you're out. It's just like you're on different stages. You were on churches last yeah. week. You're over here. Yeah. And just how many millions of people that you have made an impact in your life is so yeah. impressive and so inspiring. I no, really appreciate you. it. Yeah. Yeah. What's the biggest piece of advice you would have to people starting out building their new life, following their well, dreams and their passions, what their wishes are? I would say the biggest advice is that whatever it is that you, you're facing, whatever challenges, it also must face you. You see, the moment you come face to face with whatever your greatest fear is, failure or whatever else, you get rid of that, you now have no limits. You have to realize that your limitation is based on your mindset. You need to be around people that challenge you. If you're the smartest person in your network, leave that network. If you're the richest guy in your neighborhood, get out of that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You need to be around people that will stretch you, that will challenge you, that won't accept you being average mm -hmm. or good. And if I settled for being good instead of great, I would leave out so many more people that I should have reached. Your job is to uncover whatever excellence you have. Get rid of this negative self-talk. Get rid of the things where you, um, if your dad wasn't proud of you, didn't tell you he loves you, let that go. Man, you have a, so many other people that you can use that pain as fuel to bring forth all the pleasure you need in the world. You know? I love that Get advice. That, you know? That's Whatever beautiful. you face must also face you. Best yeah. way to engage with you. And follow your journey. Follow me on the journey. Uh, Superman. <laughs> Superman. Superman is for real. He's for real. Instagram. <laughs> I, my book comes out tomorrow. 
I, I saw the cover today. I'm yeah, honored. I'm honored. Right. I got to see the cover. I shared it with you first because yeah, yeah. you ignited me, man. I love that. Down. Wow. The cover so, looks so amazing. You standing up there. <laughs> yeah. I just so, love it. Absolute Motivation by James Dixon. It's the James Dixon story, but it's also our YouTube channel. It's Absolute Motivation. That's uh, how you follow me. Man, I look forward to it. And thank you for having me. Thank you. Me. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it, James. <laughs>